And uh, in the studio with me, David Pakman, who is the guest there, the host, rather, of Midweek Politics with David uh, David Pakman, midweekpolitics.com, his website, and Chris Collins, the director of news and programming here on WHMP. In fact, I was on his show this morning. Uh, David, Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks. <laughs> Great day. Chris, Chris, here you are, a guest in your own studio. <laughs> it's it's be a little hoot. weird. Yeah. But, uh, it's, Amazing. It's fun. It's great, uh, David. David first, David Packman. Um, you you had a very very strange guest the other day, and and I'm uh, the, the guy who went off on your being Jewish and started talking about the Jewish conspiracy to control. Every now and then I get you know these strange calls like this, but you know tell us about this and 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 your sense of whether this is the kind of thing that's coming out of this whole Tea Party hysteria. Yeah, you know it's funny. Usually it would be our callers who have these types of statements to make, but this was actually a planned interview. It wasn't just one of our audience members who's an anti-Semite. I know my audience could get the two confused. This was a planned guest. He's running for Senate in Missouri. His campaign is basically, it's the Jews stupid, and I'm not making that up. That's, Seriously? That Those are the ads he's been running, and his ads are running with I'm assuming disclaimer. he's a Republican? He's actually, in, he's been a Republican and a Democrat. Now he's an independent. He's I never see. won. That's the thing. Yeah. I think he's just trying to figure out which party will get him into office. Right. And I think the answer is none of them. Uh, his, so, so essentially I said to, you know, I did a normal interview, uh, at least as normal as I could. And he said, I said, do you hate me personally? I mean, I'm Jewish, but I have never met you. I, I, you seem like an okay guy other than the fact that you're a rabid anti-Semite. He said, yeah, I hate you personally. You're a Jew liar. You are the, the word he used was kika like, and it's not a word that I'd ever oh, heard before, yeah. but yeah, you know, that's amazing. That's amazing. You're, uh, into the lion's den. There you go. I will say one thing though, just about David's interview with that guy. I actually heard that in my car. Driving home, and I, ha- and I have to give David credit publicly because I think he handled it perfectly. Because most people would ordinarily try and make that guy look worse than he was. You didn't have to. David played it straight, and the guy just went completely off the rails. And even at the end of the interview, said that I don't think you'll run this. And David said, "Of course I will." It it's Radio great. Gold. He thought I wasn't going to run Radio Gold because he thought he did so well. I said, "I, I oh. would be this is I would be a nuts not to run this interview." Yeah. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just give the guy an open mic and let him hang himself. Yeah, That's what he did. yeah. Give him give him enough rope, and 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 we've all done, <laughs> we've all done that. Uh, let's pick up some phone calls and and you know let our callers toss a, to- a topic out, and I'd love to hear you guys riff on them. Uh, John, John in Portland, Oregon. John, you're on the air. Yeah, hey, Tom. Tom, uh, I heard you quote Rush Limbaugh, I want to say, on Wednesday's program, um, saying that you get an extra vote for every 20K of... Uh, it wasn't Limbaugh. It was the guy who filled in for him. Oh, 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 bummer, man. I was hoping to rip on Rush. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, my, my take on that is just extremely positive. It, it's just their side saying, hey, we don't have the people behind us. We've got to cheat the system. To right, get yeah. Uh, it, for it, for it people who, for people, excellent point, John. For people who weren't listening and, and don't know what we were talking about, um, the guy who filled in for Rush Limbaugh on, uh, I guess it was Wednesday, maybe it was Tuesday, said that everybody should have a vote, and then for every additional $20,000 in net worth you have, William Walters was his name, for every additional $20,000 in net worth you have, you should get an additional vote. Uh, <laughs> David Packman, your thoughts on that? You know what's funny? It, I was referring to him the same way that you were the guy who filled in for Rush, because I could I just couldn't remember what his name was. Right. It's brilliant to me that Rush Limbaugh has an African-American fill-in for him who argues that it's him discriminating against white people, white women, when he's picking who he wants to marry, is exactly the same as Rand Paul suggesting that a, a business can just hang up a sign saying, no blacks allowed. He actually made that leap. That's bizarre. That's absolutely bizarre. Let's pick up a few more calls here. Uh, Greg in Palin or Parlin, New Jersey. Hey, Greg, what's up? Uh, good morning, Tom. Uh, I wanted to speak against uh, uh, free trade, but can, can I say something about Denmark real quick? Sure. Denmark, you know, Denmark also buys cars made in the USA and elsewhere that must get 55 miles per gallon. Those cars are bought in Denmark, and they have a ten thousand dollar tax. And the rich don't mind paying it because the tax is being used for social programs. But my, yeah. but my 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 call is uh, well, and they make a lot of those cars. Like GM makes the Opel. They make them in Europe, and they average forty miles, forty five miles I, to the gallon. I know, but but yeah. in America, they get. 20 to 20 I know. to 27 it's unbelievable but anyway, I think I don't let me just jump in I don't think it's any surprise to hear that the companies making cars in the US have the technology and have the ability to make cars that get three or four times the gas mileage that they actually produce right and I think dollar signs are the reason why they're not doing it yeah, exactly yeah and 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 the, and the oil company and their involvement and all that all that kind of thing uh, Cliff in Santa Clara California Cliff you're on the air 
Hi, Tom. Um, a little off topic here, going to the past. That's but, okay. Uh, Any topic today is fine. Great. Um, you know, when Bush got appointed, he dug up all these Reagan-era criminals to join his administration, the Elliot Abrams, the Negropontes, the Poindexters, etc. Now, with this Democratic administration, they're back in the shadows. So I'm just wondering if you have any idea what these guys are up to now, because yeah. if there's going to be a change of administration in 12, they'll probably be right back in there. And oh, yeah. um, also, the $9 billion that went missing from Iraq when Paul Bremer was the viceroy. Right. Anything ever come of that? I mean, it's just... No, as far as I've heard... it as, uh, you know collateral damage economically or whatever yeah, yeah. My, my recollection is it was eight, eight, eight billion, but who knows i mean you know what's a billion here or there it's an amount of money that was visible from the moon i mean it's visible from outer space and uh, in bricks uh, huge bricks hundred dollar bills and it is it has totally vanished and uh david your thoughts on on these two issues well david the, Pakman. yeah the uh if I were a member of the U.S. military and I was there and I saw that money being carted through, I could imagine that there's going to be some kind of, well, what, what should we do? You know, kind of people looking back and forth and, and saying, uh, it, you know, not necessarily saying let's steal money here that doesn't belong to us, but just being realistic, you know the types of looks and conversations that must have been taking place when that money was found, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and, and let me add to that that um, we now know that Ed Gillespie and Carl Rove, have started a new organization which has raised so far I've seen one report of 30 million another report of 60 million dollars and they're going to and, and and one of the reports is that 30 million of that 60 million was directly from Tom Donahue at the uh, who's the president of the Chamber of Commerce and they're going to use that money now as a result of the Citizens United case to to drop money bombs to drop advertising bombs on candidates they've identified forty members of the house and ten members of the senate that they're either going to take out or that they're going to bring in one or the other and they can now do it they can do it anonymously they can do it you know as long as they don't notify the candidate as long as they don't run it through their campaign as long as they don't run it through the party and this is really a twofer for gillespie and and uh... And Rove, because apparently they both hate Michael Steele. So this is money that would normally be going through the Republican Party. It's not going to, and which actually gives it a whole lot more power. And I'm wondering if they've got a bunch of other Republican retreads with them. Uh, David Pakman. Yeah, real funny. You mentioned Michael Steele. Within the same week, we find out that the RNC was taking uh, young Republicans out to a lesbian bondage strip club in California, whatever that is. I've never been to one. And simultaneously, there's a couple of new groups that crop up with former GOP fundraisers that now they're finding the GOP to be too far to the left. So they're actually creating even more conservative organizations to raise money. So I think that's where some of them are going. Apparently, not taking too kindly to the lesbian bondage strip club ordeal. Yeah. They'll, they'll come up with some new kind of... I mean, it's, it is... It is uh, well, it's really sad, actually, um, and 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 obviously, you know, I mean, we the the Tea Parties have been funded by these guys all along. There's there's all this kind of money that's under the table. Dick Army's organization, Dick Army, who's a lobbyist for some of the some of the most awful governments in the world out there, funding the Tea Parties. It's incredible. David Pakman, you can find all about found find out all about it over at uh, midweekpolitics.com. And Chris Collins, WHMP. What's the website here, Chris? WHMP.com. Aha, that works. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Chris Collins, David Packman, thank you both for being with me. Thanks.